So I'm back and this time I'm going to explain uh, at this beginning about the texture for the cloth. So back here in Blender, uh, first of all, to I, I will hide this menu here so I have more space and uh, <clears throat> I'm here in edit mode. And first of all, I need a, a texture for this. I will create a new texture. Uh, if I'm going to use this as an overlay, it makes sense to have uh, the same resolution as the rest of the body uh, texture. Also, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to keep the alpha and, really important, uh, set the alpha to zero. A fast way of uh, actually getting the, the alpha in the right uh, spaces for this texture is going here in the render area let me try to get this a little bigger and then go in here on the bake uh, so we have the the possibility to bake um, in this case alpha might work uh, so i'm basically going to bake the alpha channel of this cloth uh, I'm not going to use the select to active because uh, usually we bake based on two, two different meshes that are selected together but in this case what I'm going to do is bake based on only this map this, sorry, this mesh uh, with uh, 16 for, for the margin I hit bake and we now have the, the the alpha uh, for this for this cloth. In fact, as this one is a uh, is also the the overlay, it might be good, a good idea not to use a, a margin with so big value. So I'm keeping a two for this one, so we have a, a better a cl closer uh, texture. So I'm going to save this one. Uh, here, uh, so let me give like a male t shirt. Uh, as we've already talked, we, we need to provide a diffuse, a specular, and glass, and uh, also a normal map. So, here I'm saving this as the diffuse. I'm going to include some, some stuff here, uh, change this texture, but I, I'm just saving the, the base here, so you can see how all this step is done. Uh, if we we actually had a, a high, higher poly mesh, uh, let, let me show you. I'm going to duplicate this one, so now I have two different meshes, this and this. And for this duplicated one, I'm going to do some really rough uh, changes. Like I'm going to drag this, uh, this on one side. And here. Okay, Th this is quite simple, just a fast uh, change so that you can see the, how, how the normal map is calculated. So we select this one, uh, let me hide this body. So we have this duplicated and the, and the original one. So we select the, this, this one that has the modifications, the, the original one. And then I'm going to bake this normal one. Uh, here in the bake section, I'm going on uh, normal. And uh, in this case, it's a tangent map, and also uh, we need to, to check this one, uh, sele uh, select to active, so that we have the, the other uh, mesh being used as the base texture, ba base reference. So now if I bake, you can see that the normal map is receiving this variation here. The area change. So 
I'm going to save this one. Keep in mind this uh, extremely simple uh, example, just to have an idea how it works. Uh, I'm saving this one. Uh, I really don't need the alpha channel for a normal map at all. Uh, Okay, uh, so now I'm going to have a fast work on Photoshop and I will get back to Unity. Okay, so now we are here in Unity and we've made some changes for those textures, for the t-shirts. I've filled the entire texture area of the normal map with a neutral normal map value. We have the specular here. As you can see, the specular and gloss values are uh, very low, so we have a, we don't have a shiny, shiny uh, t-shirt. And here is a diffuse channel. <coughs> As you might notice, most of the content is grayscale for the diffuse, so that we can uh, provide uh, color information, so we can have a t-shirt color. Uh, a unique t-shirt color for each avatar, for example. So I'm going to drag those. Oh, uh, I actually have to first create a, a new overlay. Here in uh, Yuma Assets overlay, uh, male. We have the male uh, t-shirt <coughs> one. And here we go. Drag those here. Yeah. The same way I've done with the previous videos, I'm going to uh, set the, those textures uh, configurations. So for all of them, we have uh, the maximum resolution. And uh, <clears throat> in case of the, the normal map, I set here the tag as normal map. And uh, for specular, I usually also set the alpha as transparency. Uh, here. Okay, here. Okay. As you can see, the values are really low, so we don't have a shiny uh, t shirt. Yeah, so now I actually going to use Yuma Builder from Johan uh, to. Oh, this is always <laughs> happening. Yeah, it's really boring. Let me drag this one here so we can actually don't have to be changing windows all the time. We have the three textures. Oh, by the way, uh, I think I've already uh, showed this, but let me reinforce this. Uh, I can actually drag all of them to this area and it will already identify those, so it's faster. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to drag the, the folder itself, and I'm going to <coughs> rename this as 01. Okay, so now I hit uh, Process Material. Okay, uh, it might take a while because this is a higher resolution <coughs> texture. We have the final normal map and the final uh, diffuse section here. As always, I'm going to uh, define that both of them have the read and write enable. Okay, that's important for uh, Inti version. And that's it. I'm going to remove those not necessary anymore and uh, I'm going to duplicate uh, another overlay. The <coughs> Actually the Yuma Material Builder uh, do this process also. To, uh, for keeping this simple I'm, I'm going to explain the um, manu manual way of doing this. Uh, on documentation, final documentation, this will be uh, provided the way to do this here. <clears throat> so we actually renamed this one and we are going to include this here. 
order by name and update and we have here the mail t-shirt let me uh, change this okay so in this case we are not actually cropping the final texture for the overlay so I'm not changing those values and I'm going to use this diffuse and this normal map so that's it. Um, now I actually just have to include this t-shirt on the code. As you can see this is an overlay. Uh, that will be included here. Let me work this out. Okay, here we go. Let me just uh, paste here the, this name. And actually, we have an interesting situation here as we have the t shirt sharing the same overlay as the, the Yuma uh, Zulat number two, that's the <coughs> torso. We can actually um, <coughs> add a new this overlay to, the, to this slot or the second one. It makes no difference as both of them share the same, the same overlay list. <clears throat> so we are going to, I'm just going to copy this one here <clears throat> and use this. Okay, and also really important, if I don't set a color here, I'm definitely going to have a grayscale texture. So let me just see what happens here. Yes, here we go. As you can see, the the uh, t-shirt is now grayscale, as expected, and I, I'm going to fill a, um, an extra color for for this overlay. So we have a color variation on t-shirts. Yeah. So um, I probably have a yeah. This one is already randomizing the color. Uh, sorry for copying and pasting all of this, but it's just to keep things fast. Uh, <clears throat> so here we go. Right. As you can see now, <clears throat> each of those has a unique color. Uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, there, there is a lot of uh, <clears throat> power on this overlay technique. You can even use uh, more than one procedurally generated color uh, if you have two overlays with different masks. <clears throat> And I also want to show the atlas. <clears throat> As you can see here, the actual uh, t-shirt um, overlay is being applied to the, the body texture itself, as you can see. So uh, now I will have to uh, stop this video again because of the time limit. And on the next one, I'm going to show how to create a cloth or an accessory from the from scratch with no uh, base mesh as reference. So that's it. Goodbye.